Thank you very much, Anna. And uh, Prime Minister Amato will have the honor to conclude these remarks before we take some time for answering questions from the audience. So, Prime Minister, you had to deal with the whole range of issues posed by immigration. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Well, uh, Philippe was uh, noticing that quite a deep change occurred in Europe when the financial and economic crisis brought all of its consequence, uh, consequences onto our communities. I must say that I noticed already a change when I was at the interior. It's a couple of years before the crisis. I was at the interiors between 2006 and 2008. And already at the time, due, if you want, to the uh, increased numbers of immigrants since the beginning of our European migration policy, that goes back to Tampere, beautiful times at the times of Tampere, uh, due also to the uh, terrorist acts that we had to suffer inside Europe in 2004, London and Madrid. The mood had changed. And as I frequently say to my students, we passed from a Europe of hope to a Europe of fear. And this was substantially the change, because when Tampere established the principles of our migration policy, I well remember, if, if you go to, to the conclusions of the European Council uh, in that occasion, uh, the first point in relation to migration was the relationship between us and the countries of origin to remove the roots of migration, which meant to remove poverty, to promote growth, and fighting for our security against the threat connected to migration meant fighting human trafficking, not fighting the migrants. The migrants at the time were perceived as the victims of the crimes committed with migration by the traffickers, the organizers of these horrible journeys in the Mediterranean Sea, where we have been paying such a toll of debts throughout the years. Well, in a few years, this has changed somehow, and little by little, migration as such was perceived as a threat to security. And the distinction that Anna was very doubtful about in her short speech a few minutes ago between legal and illegal became a crucial divide. If you're legal, you are fine. If you are illegal, you are a threat. And due to the fact that you are a threat, I treat you as a threat. And therefore, you reach the peak of countries like Italy, where entering by illegal means in the, into the country is by itself a penal crime, which uh, uh, after a while was challenged uh, uh, successfully in the European courts, uh, 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 as you well know. Which demonstrates what? That migration is a threat to your security if you decide culturally that it is so. Uh, and if you don't do anything to prevent migration to be perceived uh, as a threat. I was impressed by a, a research that I asked for when I was at the interior on, uh, let's say, the suburbs of our big cities where most of the immigrants uh, had found their, uh, uh, let's say, ordinary living. And something that impressed me 
was the answer frequently given by uh, generally middle-aged old Italian women used to going around uh, 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 and somehow blocked by the newcomers. The answer was, when I walk out of my flat, I see them there. They speak a language I don't understand. I'm scared. So you clearly understand that if you don't understand somebody else, if you don't share the language, you are fearful, you are scared. If I do something for you to understand each other, at that point, the reason of that fear fades away, and you understand each other. And we will know that the Commission, before Cecile arrived already, had prepared a beautiful program of activities for uh, promoting mutual understanding between the uh, uh, old communities and the newcomers, having picnics together, sharing the foods, sharing uh, uh, somehow the languages themselves. Now, what is impressive for me, allow me to say this, that this has always been the successful history of this country, where we are in today, of Italy, because the uh, well-known creativity of the Italians, which seems to be our main quality, we are creating much more than all of you. Why are we so creative? No, it's not natural talent. It's historically the fact that so many different peoples entered the uh, territory of this country, mixed up with the pre-existing communities, and the diversities uh, uh, mixed up with each other produced something new that we, of course, say is the product of our creativity. It's the product of mixing diversities. In this city, you have the best example of it. Look at the dome of this cathedral, a masterpiece by Brunelleschi. What is the architectonic style of it? It's Romanic plus Gothic equal the dome of this cathedral. So the pre-existing style of this community with the arrival from Northern Europe of the Gothic produces something new. And this is the creativity of the Italians. They wouldn't so creative had they rejected the others when they were arriving and entering the country. Our language. We are so proud of the Italian, the most beautiful language of the world, even better than the French, as you well know. Well, I mean, <laughs> if you are here, you have to accept three things, very difficult for you. Wines, cheese, and language, Italian are better than their French counterparts. I understand it's hard for you, it's impossible. but you know, it's, it's the hard lesson of history, Lenin would say, and you have to accept it. But I mean, our, our language, our language is a mixture of different languages. Arab words, Spanish words, German words, French words, and it's this sort of cocktail that has produced the Italians. So the Italians nowadays should be very aware that if they have a role in the world, if they have a, a sort of profile in the world, if they have capabilities and qualities, they owe all of these to being open to diversities, to accept the others, to mix with the, uh, with the others. This is a general lesson also for Europe. 
integration policies are essential to security much more than criminal law. Making legal migration easy reduces the incentive for illegal migration and therefore reduces the role, the impact, and the weight of the traffickers in the Mediterranean. Not treating any migrant as a sort of threat allows us to separate the criminals from the others of their national communities. I well know this thing as an Italian, because I well know that my ancestors in Australia, in the US, in other countries, were ready to cover the uh, uh, acts against the law of their fellow Italians if they felt rejected as a separate community. After all, he's an Italian as I am, and I've got to defend him or her. If I feel a member of the wider community, for me, he is just a criminal. I have no superior reason to identify myself with him which is something that we should learn about the Rome communities. And we never understand it, that the Rome minorities, the more are treated as a separate minorities, the more we make it difficult for them to isolate the criminals that frequently affect their own, uh, their own lives. And finally, I mean, we have this experience in Italy, and I think in all of the other member states, that migrants who don't arrive legally are in the hands of criminal organizations that blackmail them and use them as manpower, human resources for committing crimes. So, what we should do today, and this is essential just because of the change that has intervened in the mood of several national communities of our uh, European Union, is to restore again the spirit of the initial policies of the time of tempere. Uh, restore confidence, restore confidence. Without confidence, there is necessarily hostility. All of us are aware of that research by Bob Putnam uh, that was published in, in Sweden, I think, the first time, uh, in which it, 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 it was clear that we have to be proactive, otherwise hostility might grow. That the fact that diversities enrich each other is true, he wrote, among engineers in Palo Alto coming from different countries and working on the same project. But if you go uh, uh, into a poor section of one of our cities, they might feel enemy to each other because they don't understand each other. And they don't reach each other. They don't trust each other. And therefore, we have to prevent these feelings from spreading around, from asking for repressive solutions, from uh, betting on the possibility of building diversified communities. I mean, I strongly believe these things. It's not rhetoric. Italy would not exist without this kind of uh, basic cultural platform and societal uh, structure. And therefore, it would be pointless to be in Italy and to be xenophobe. Uh, it's a nonsense, historically and culturally.